So a few things. So let's let's talk about kind of by definition measures of center. Okay. So this is not on the notes, but you're getting some bonus footage. This is called a normal distribution curve. Okay. It's supposed to look like a nice bell curve. Um, the ends of this are asymptotes, meaning they approach the x-axis, but they never cross the x-axis. Make sense so far? So you have some measures. You have something called the mean, which is the average. Okay. You also have something called the median, which is the middle most data point. And I think those are the only two things that we're looking at right now. Actually, we're probably just going to look at the mean. So the mean is the average. So we've taken the mean before. You add up all the scores, and you divide by the number of scores. Or we don't do that math, and we let decimals do it for us. I like decimals doing it for us better. Okay? So anytime you see the Greek letter sigma, that means that you're going to be adding stuff up. That's all it is. Sigma means you're just adding stuff up. All right, so, so in the world of statistics, when you see, um, when you see that Greek letter sigma, this means add up, okay? So that's just the nuts and bolts of it. So let's take a look at Desmos and see how Desmos is going to handle us finding the mean. Let me get rid of this here, get rid of that. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to do our table. Now, a lot of times with these smaller numbers here, our data set one or data set two, it is relatively easy to um, just do the basic arithmetic and divide. But let's get the muscle memory down. So it looks like for list one, I have six, four, five, seven. Something wrong. Oh, something's wrong. Not going under the list. Thanks for thanks for having my back. Yeah. You can't take me anywhere. I'll tell you. Six, four, five, seven, four, and six. Okay. So. Here's the nice thing. We just type in the word mean, or you can find it under the under here, where if you go to functions, you might be able to find mean. So mean would right, be right there on statistics. So it's, it's your choice. And I don't know why I have secant there, but I don't want secant. So the mean of x1. So our mean of x1 is 5.3 repeating forever. Oh, that's so much nicer than going 6 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 4 plus 6 divided by 2. But it comes out the same number if you did it right. Now, please note this. Um, as my display comes up here, my equal sign looks like a negative sign. It's, it's, I'm sure if you did it on Desmos, it shows equals. I don't know. There's something wrong with something wrong with Desmos. Okay, so there's our first piece of information. But our second piece of data, our second data set, we go, we have the same data, but then we go to 30. And that winds up giving us the 8.86. Decimal goes forever again. That's not negative. My equal sign doesn't show up clearly on this because uh, I'm on the set three or something. So. That's basically how these two numbers went. So take a look at data set one and two. They are, for the most part, almost completely the same, except for one of them has a 30. So what did the 30 do? If you look at the original mean of 5.33, and then the 30 made it 8.86. So let's say I were to 
had had a quiz and everyone did really cruddy and you get the one kid who aced it. So what that does is that, you know, a high outlier tugs the mean to the right. A really low outlier liar would tug it to the left. So the mean so the big thing to know about the mean, which is the average, outliers affect it. So either tugs right or left, depending upon if it's a really high piece of data or a really low piece of data. Okay, and that's something that's critical to know because sometimes on a central thread, when you're looking at something, the mean isn't always the best thing on the center of our normal distribution to look at because of an outlier. Then if I go and I go a little bit further down the page and say, well, let's take a look at the median. So the median is the middle of our data. The median does not get tugged right or left based on outliers. You know, really high scores or low, really low scores. Okay. Um, we've all probably driven around certain regions of the Denver area, and you might go into one neighborhood where you have, kind of have all oh, those are nice homes, and then all of a sudden you have like the biggest most luxurious looking home that kind of is messing with the values. Like, oh yeah, you know, I, I could look at any of those real estate sites, you know, Zillow or whatever, and you can see what the average, what the Zestimate, what Zillow estimates the house is at. And all of a sudden you get the one house that's like, oh, that's 600,000, that's 650,000, that's 700,000. That's 2.3 million, that's 400,000. You know, that one house is going to impact the mean. It's going to tug it to the right or the left. So that's, that's a lot of times when they, if you listen to any news reports, they will talk about, hey, we have a, we're going to use the median score for this. And as soon as you hear them say, we're giving you the median score, that means there's outliers that would have existed in the original data set. Okay, an outlier being extremely large or extremely small compared to the data set. So if I go back to Zillow, I got Zillow, uh, Desmos, excuse me. And I change that, and I go another table, and I run through my table. So we have two, four, five, seven, nine. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Two, four, five, seven, nine. And I go and I say, okay, well, I want the median then, or the middle of my data. Just type in median, or you can find it under the functions. Median of X1, in this case, is going to be 5. Okay? But if I did my other data set, where it's the same data set, whereas I don't have the 9 there, then it changes to 4.5. So if you see it on this far board, uh, we have a data set where it appears that 9 might have some sort of impact. I mean, I can go change this 9 to any number I want. You know, it could be extremely huge or not. So, so watch what would happen on, let's go to our original data set. So, our original data set was 9, correct? Okay, median's 5, agree? Well, let's change this to like 10,000. Notice my median didn't change. So, the median is not impacted by um, outliers, extreme right or left numbers. Okay, the median is truly just the middle of your data set, so sometimes it becomes something better to look at than the mean. Again, if, they talk, if you're reading a report and they're giving you stuff like the median score for this is, that means that you have an outlier in, or outlier or outliers in your data set. Okay. That makes sense. Any questions so far about mean or median? Okay, median. 
stay safe with outliers means that it's tugged right or left based on outliers. Yes, it is possible you have outliers to the right and to the left where they could balance each other off. But just know that if you're looking at a data set, especially this very first data set, where you have single digit scores and then you have a 30, that 30 is tugging the mean to the right. Okay, if I found the median of that data set, you know, the median here is probably right in here, six. The median here would be seven. So, yes, yeah, sometimes the median does get impacted by an extra data point on right or left, but moving a little data point right or left, it's not that big of a deal. It's when you have a drastic change between them. Okay? So, again, mean and median deal with central spreads of data. Good old meanness. So, um, I'm somebody who is kind of a fan of the environment. Okay? Like, kid you not, friends. In CP Algebra 1 and Accelerated Algebra 1, every student will be given one of these for all my chapters. This is one chapter of Algebra 1. Oh my gosh. Every kid in Algebra 1, whether it's accelerated or CP, throughout the entire district is going to give get nine of those packets throughout the year. I don't think there's going to be a forest left in the world after the end of this year. I think they're actually going to cut down trees in our neighborhoods to make paper. I'm just like, jeez. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So data set number two, the median is the average of the middle two numbers. Data set two, oh, where does data set two go? Data set two. Oh. Data set two. So if I have on the median, if I have an odd number of numbers, it's just the true middle. If I have an even number of numbers, I'll take the two middle num <coughs> excuse me, two middle numbers, add them together, divide by two. That's what's the deal for you. Okay? So the median is the middle of the data. Sometimes the middle of the data is halfway between two of the middle pieces of information. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard that at some point in math or somewhere along the line. If not, well, welcome to statistics. All right. So so, it should be noted that our statistics, we don't provide valuable information for very small data sets. Like all the data sets provided in the freedom, the median is usually vulnerable to weird behavior over small sample sizes. So, an example would be the data set up there. We have 4444444710. The median is 4. So, that's the middle of the data. So, if you were to come to the middle of this, come in one, come in one, come in one, there's my 4. If I had an even number of numbers, you would take two middle pieces of data, add them together, divide by two. Or if you did it on decimals, decimals will do it for you. Yay for decimals. Okay? Um, so let's see. All right. So the fact that median is described as the value at, ooh, there's a new word, the 50th percentile. All right. So this is going to mean something. So let's talk about the word percentile. The median is at the 50th percentile, or 50th percent. That means half your data is below it, half your data is above it. Okay, that doesn't mean anything about the averages, but when you talk about percentiles, um, I would imagine most of you have taken an ACT or an SAT. And when you get a, you might have a raw score, but it might tell you the percentile that you might be in. Um, so let's say you had an ACT score that you're looking at, and it gives you a certain score, and then they say that you're in the 80th percentile. 
That means that you did better than 80% of the other people who took the test. 20% of the people did better than you that took the test throughout you know, the United States or whoever takes the ACT. So when you think about percentile, think about where it falls. If you fell in the 30th percentile, you did better than 30% of the people, while 70% of the people did better than you. And then they get really get obscure with percentiles. They're like, you're in the 99.99 percentile. So that means you did better than 99.99% of the people that took the test. Only 0.01% of the people did better than you, which is pretty extraordinary if you pull a 99.99 percentile for a score. Um, so in this case, it's often described as 50th percentile of the data set. That means 50% of data lie lay below the median. Again, it's an accurate phrase when the sample size is large. So a newspaper article describing the median gas price is $2.20 per gallon. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Wait, what? They're saying that the, the middle gas price is $2.20. What? Yeah, I man, we, we're like in the past. Um, so that would say that we have a lot of gas stations to draw from the conclusion 50% of gas stations have gas prices lower than 220. Oh, I would love to find those gas stations. And then we have 50% of them that are higher than that price. The median is considered, okay, so you might want to highlight this, circle this, something. The median is considered a resistant measure. The median is considered a resistant measure. The median is not being tugged right or left by some sort of really big value or really small value. Usually large and small values don't have a significant effect on the median. Therefore, the median is certainly preferred measure of the center for data sets with outliers. The median, if you have, out, have outliers, I will assure you that you'll see a test question that will finally ask about the median, or it will say, what is resistant to outliers or something like that. The median is always resistant. Okay? The mean, the mean gets influenced. The mean is that uh, that person who's like, who should I vote for? Oh, that was a fun ad. I'm gonna vote for that person. And you're like, oh geez, that's how you're facing it. You know, they had puppy dogs on their thing and they're like, they're gonna vote for that person. Or this person, or whomever. Okay. All right, and then the bottom part, we talked about if you use your driving calculator. We're using Desmo, so we don't have to worry about that bottom piece of information there. Cool? All right. So this was 1-6. The next time you will see a quiz in here will be Thursday next week. So you should be able to participate in... The assignment 1-6, you guys know the page if you're looking at the book, I don't know my page because my book is going to be off if I show you my page. You're like, oh, it's one page. So, 115 is what is being claimed. Okay. So I'll give you guys the rest of the period to work on page 115. Just know we have a dot plot, so that means we have a score of a 10.1, we have three scores of 10.2, we have four scores of 10.3, so on and so forth. So if you plug into decimals, this first problem, we're asking if you have any outliers, and then find the mean and median. So if you plug this data in, you go 10.1, 10.2, 10.2, 10.2, 10.3, 10.3, 10.3, 10.3, etc. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.